diamonds. Uh, where are they found? They're mostly in rocks that are older than two and a half billion years. Was, this is interesting. Um, and it's raised a lot of a lot of questions about uh, how they formed. Um, there's even some people that believe they formed by uh, from some kind of a meteorite impact stardust. Uh, but uh, the usual uh, belief is that uh, it was an ancient subduction zone um, uh, where rocks became uh, were uh, pushed down into the earth at very large depths, maybe about 200 kilometers, high temperature, high pressure, and it's basically carbon. You can imagine there's a lot of carbon that comes out of the um, oceans, uh, living matter and so on, and it's brought down to these depths. Uh, and all a diamond is is just uh, is just uh, carbon at high, uh, that's been squeezed and subjected to a very high temperature. Um, that forms a, a diamond, and then um, the um, diamond is shot up through a volcano in an explosive volcano. Um, and through a, it's in a rock called uh, rock type called kimberlite, and uh, the diamonds are deposited near the Earth's crust. Uh, they, so the diamonds come up in this um, in this kimberlite pipe and are deposited underneath this volcano, and then subsequently the volcano is eroded away and uh, uh, the diamond deposit remains there. So what happens in South Africa is they will look for these kimberlite pipes, and the the classic one occurs near a place called Kimberley, hence the name kimberlite. And so they'll look for these uh, pipes, and those are likely locations of uh, diamond bearing rocks. Now. The fact that you don't see these massive explosive volcanoes happening today and uh, you, and that all these uh, diamonds occur in very old rocks have suggested to some um, that maybe the earth isn't working this way anymore and there are no more diamonds being formed. Um, so this is where the debate occurs and, um, and um, some people, some cynics believe it's the, the Beers group that is actually promoting this to keep the supply down. but. Uh, uh, that, that's uh, sort of a running joke, but um, in any event, it's it's interesting that they are that you don't see these big explosive volcanoes uh, occurring. These are massive volcanoes. Uh, there's evidence of them that has happened in the distant past. You don't see them happening anymore, and all these diamonds occur in pretty old rocks. Um, in the Arctic, uh, things are a little different. Um, if we go back to this. Here um, you can see that this volcano was sheared off or eroded away, and um, and uh, leaving this kimberlite pipe. That's what you see in South Africa. Uh, in northern Canada, uh, you've got the old rocks, uh, two and a half billion or older rocks, uh, years old, but they've been covered by a glacier, uh, glacial debris, and uh, quite thick deposits of it. And so what's happened is the glacier is come across this kimberlite pipe, which is shown here on the right, um, and it sheared it off and probably dragged with it all kinds of indicator minerals that come along with it for the ride in the, uh, in the uh, kimberlite. These are things like garnets and chromite and some diamonds, perhaps, but uh, those are rare. So they'll drag this, um, uh, all these along, along with the glacier in the glacial debris. And so uh, this is what it looks like in... Um, near a diamond mine in the Northwest Territories. This is all glacial till. This is summer, of course. Um, what they don't show there is the number of black flies, but uh, that's, that's, um, that's kind of one of the things you have to deal with um, in the Arctic. But uh, underneath, in the, within this debris, uh, there are these indicator minerals, and you can trace those, trace the path of the glacier uh, by just tracing these, uh, these indicator minerals up to the source. And this is actually how a man by the name of Chuck Fipke did it. Um, he, people thought he was crazy, but he said, look, we've got the old rocks there. There are indications of these indicator minerals in the glacial till, the debris. Uh, all I have to do is um, follow the, 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 uh, the path of the glacier back up to the source. And he did that, and the story gets better every time it's told. He was... Um, he ran out of, uh, he was running out of money for helicopters, but he, in his last helicopter ride, he, he begged the pilot to fly him over to one location and found the uh, location of what is now the Akati Diamond Mine. Um, he doesn't have to work anymore, but uh, it was a huge bet 
but you can see the, the big picture stuff that he was dealing with. He was looking at a model of how the earth worked. And uh, we've got the old rocks. Diamonds occur in old rocks. All we have to do is find a way to see through this glacial till. And he discovered a way to do it. And that was his, actually his, um, his major academic or research advance and uh, plowed through this, um, you know, trekked through this um, uh, till, uh, this tundra here. Uh, to find what is now a, a, kimber, a couple, a number of kimberlite pipes that form the Akati mine. Um, a lot of diamond mines are now being found or discovered in Northwest Territories, and they're simply looking uh, again for these indicator minerals in the till, or they're actually looking directly uh, by geophysical methods, which I'll talk about in a minute uh, or later, um, for these kimberlite pipes. Um, This is a uh, picture of the Divik mine, which is another uh, diamond mine in the in the Arctic. Uh, this they mine all year round. This is on a uh, summer's day here. There's a dam here that keeps the lake back from uh, from uh, flooding the pit. Uh, and uh, like I said, they mine year round. This is at minus 35 degrees, shown on the left here. Um, this these mines are just supplied by a seasonal ice road, which is only open from February to April. Um, you have, if you don't get things in in that time period, you have to fly them in, which is very expensive. Uh, this is one day's take from uh, uh, Diavik. This number, this item here, which is cir circled in red, I believe is worth about thirty thousand dollars. So you can see all the effort, why the why the why the effort uh, goes into this. This is an incredible engineering feat just to build this dam, keep the water out of it. They are now going underground. Uh, they have mined out all they can in the pit, and they're now going to, they're thinking, or they are constructing the mine to go underground from somewhere within the pit, just to get in deeper within the Kimberlite pipe. Sedimentary ore deposits. Now, these are deposits that are formed as a result of um, deposition of uh, the minerals that come out of the ocean or river deposits. One um, such deposit is a placer gold, although I'll, as I'll talk about later, there, there's, there may be another way these form. But in any event, uh, there's large amounts of gold found in rivers. This is a placer gold operation in the Yukon Territory, and it involves dredging up large amounts of uh, gravels and sifting through those to find the gold nuggets. Um, you can also uh, have ancient oceans uh, that uh, dried up. This is one example of a salt flat in California, which is actually used uh, to they mine salt from this. It's also a tourist location. But uh, there's lots of ancient oceans that have been covered over and formed what is now, now potash deposits in central Canada. And uh, this is what the geography of North America looked like about 400 million years ago, much older than the copper deposits here. It was flooded by an ocean, and uh, the whole thing was underwater. And uh, so minerals deposited out of this in large areas in Saskatchewan uh, and parts of uh, the U.S. And uh, they precipitated out of the sea, and then subsequently the ocean dried up, and then it was covered over by a couple of kilometers of sediments after that. And so what you have now are a number of underground potash mines in um, central Saskatchewan, some of them are about one to two kilometers deep and uh, large flat line deposits. I, I think I have a picture of them later. Um, minded. Uranium. Uh, there are many, uh, there are several ways uranium is, uh, is, is uh, formed or or uranium ore deposits form. This, Mechanism I'm going to describe here is a um, is a, a mechanism that makes the uh, makes the, the the richest uranium deposits. And when I say rich, uh, I'm talking about concentrations of 19 to 24 or 25 percent uranium. Um, the thing about uranium, the the atom, the uranium atom is so large it just doesn't fit into the crystal structure of uh, of most rocks, and so. Uh, it comes out of the magma, and it's, it's really got nowhere to go. Um, it, uh, and so it becomes soluble in the water. And so even after all the other minerals 
of, of precipitated out, like the copper and iron, uranium is still in solution. And it um, travels in the groundwater and gets deposited in, uh, in, um, in large concentrations um, simply because it doesn't fit anywhere else. And